Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Ketubot, we are up to Perek Zayin Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'elu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbay, Veliyahu Ben, Burcha Yisraelu, Ben Chana Bad Miriam, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Abdi Ben Chaim Nechaim, Vada Refua Shenema, of Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betor Shach Ole Yisrael. The Mishnah begins, Amadir et Ishto, Shelot Telech Lebet HaEvel, or Lebet HaMishteh, if one made a vow that his wife may not go to a house of mourning to comfort the mourners or to a house of rejoicing, to participate in a wedding or other celebration, again, meaning the wife made the vow and the husband did not cancel it, Yotzivit in Ketubah, he must divorce her if she wants and give her the Ketubah, Noel Bifanea, because by forbidding her to attend these events, he, so to speak, locks the door in front of her. By forbidding her to attend joyful events, he locks the door to happiness and removal of sorrow, and by forbidding her to attend the house of mourning, he locks the door against people coming to mourn her when she dies. For if she does not mourn the death of others, they will not mourn her. This is what the Gemara explains on page 72a in Mesechet Kitubot. However, if he claims that the vow is needed because of something else, meaning because indecent people are known to be at the events his wife wishes to attend, Rashai, he is permitted to confirm the vow, and doing so does not provide grounds for divorce. Now in the Mishnah's next case, a wife made a vow and her husband said that he would cancel it if she fulfills a certain condition. Amar Laiv, he said, Al liploni ma li, the vow is canceled on the condition that you tell so-and-so something intimate that you told me, or on the condition that you tell him something intimate that I told you, or on the condition that you will fill jugs with water and pour the water onto a garbage dump, which the Rav explains which, which would make her look like a fool. You would see if you think Ketubah, must divorce her if she wants and give her the Ketubah. Since it is absurd to expect her to do any of these things, it is as if he directly refused to cancel the vow. And that is that of Mishnah Hey. Now, having mentioned several cases in which a woman can force her husband to divorce her and pay her Ketuba, the, the Mishnah, Mishnah Vav, lists some cases where the opposite is true, meaning where a husband can divorce his wife against her will and not pay her Ketuba. The Mishnah begins, Velu Yotzot Shelo Bechtuba, the fallen women can be divorced without receiving a Ketuba. Haoveret al Dad Moshe Vihudit, one who violates the code of Moshe, or the code of accepted Jewish conduct. Now the commentaries explain the code of Jewish conduct refers to standards of modesty that are not written in the Torah but are traditionally observed by Jewish women. In the Mishnah's cases, the wife loses her rights to her ketubah only if two witnesses testify that she sinned and she was warned beforehand that a wife who commits such a sin is divorced without receiving her ketubah. And the, when, when the Mishnah says that she does not receive her ketubah, it means that she loses her right to the standard ketubah payment, which is 100 or 200 zoos, any extra amount that has been added, and the monetary value of her tzon barzel properties. However, if her tzon barzel and malok properties still exist, she may collect them as they are. This is the explanation of the Rav. The Mishnah continues, Ve'ezohi dat Moshe, what is a violation of the code of Moshe that provides grounds for divorce? The Miri explains a husband cannot divorce his wife without paying a ketubah just because she committed a biblical transgression, even a severe one. Rather, violating the code of Moshe means something else in this context. So when a wife violates biblical law in a way that harms her husband, is what the Mishnah is referring to as in the following examples of the Mishnah. Ma'achilato she'eno me'usar she deliberately serves him food that has not been tithed. We know the Torah forbids eating tevin, which is produce from which the required portions of teruma, maaser, etc. have not been removed. So the Rav explains the wife told her husband that the food is tithed, but after he ate it, she was found to have been lying. And the ne- in the next two cases as well, the wife lied to her husband and thereby caused him to sin. Um shamashto nida, or she has marital relations with him and she is a nida. Or does not separate chala from food that she serves him. Chala is the portion that must be removed from dough and given to a Kohen. Food made of dough from which chala was not removed is another form of tevel. Or makes vows that she does not keep. In this case, the wife did not cause her husband to sin. She harmed him nevertheless because when parents make vows and fail to keep them, this can endanger their young children. What is a violation of the code of accepted Jewish conduct? 
These are breaches of modesty that harm the marriage, as in the following examples, Yotza v'roshah parua, she goes outside with her head uncovered, v'tova bashuk, or spins wool in the marketplace with wide sleeves, such that when she raises her hand, she exposes her arms, umdaberet im kol adam, or speaks with every man, meaning the Rav explains, she talks frivolously with the young men. Other behaviors that warrant divorce and loss of the ketuba, Abba Shaul Omer, Abba Shaul says, also woman who curses her husband's parents in his presence. Rabbi Tafon Omer, Rabbi Tafon says, also a noisy woman. And who is a noisy woman? When she speaks in her house to ask for marital relations, and her neighbors can hear her. And that is an abotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Ba'uch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.